on today's video I'm going to talk about why I moved to Canada, how I came to Canada, is it actually much better to be a scientist here in Canada? Stay tuned and watch this video to hear about my journey, um, why I moved countries when I graduated. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button below for more videos about wildlife biology, being a scientist, what my life is like and how I got here in my job today. So a few of you guys have asked me in the comment section why I specifically moved to Canada. I decided to move to Canada for a few different reasons. One of them being that I started dating my boyfriend and he lived in Canada. <laughs> if we're being totally honest, that's like the main reason because I was sick of doing the long distance relationship and I just wanted to move here to be with him. But I'd like to think that I am a little bit more logical than that and I don't just think about the guy I'm dating and where he lives. So I actually did think a lot about it and like what it would mean for my career. I looked at the opportunities that were available in Canada and the opportunities that were available in California. So if you guys don't already know, I'm originally from California and I went to school at UCSD, University of California, San Diego. And I was kind of faced with this choice and you guys who are making a lot of career decisions can probably relate to this is, do I stay where I'm going to school and try to get a job at like the place that I did my internship or should I kind of take a little bit of a risk and move somewhere new and see if this is a good fit for me and I tend to make a lot of impulse decisions so I didn't do a ton of thinking about this one I kind of just decided to go and I figured if I don't like it I could always move back I could try to get a job at the place I was working at to get hired back so the risks weren't so bad because the benefits outweighed any like potential downsides. So I decided to just do it. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about how I came to Canada, the visas that I used as an American citizen to legally immigrate to Canada. And if you aren't interested in hearing about visas, just skip to the part of the video that I'm gonna show on the screen below. And so when I moved to Canada, I came on a work visa. And so if you are a recent graduate in the United States, United States citizen, and you want to move to Canada within, I think it's like a year after you graduate, you're actually eligible for like a working holiday visa. And it's a one year work visa where you can go to Canada and work pretty much any job with some exceptions, but you have to either get a permanent visa by the end of the one year term, or you have to leave and go back home. If you're not a new grad, then you don't qualify for that specific visa. So I used the working holiday visa to come to Canada. I didn't have a job set up when I moved here. I was stuck with the very difficult task of being a new immigrant to Canada with no Canadian work experience, with almost no American work experience because I had only ever really done like a few internships. So it's hard enough to be a new grad in the city that you went to school in, but to move to a whole nother country it was incredibly difficult. So I ended up spending a total of six months without a biology job and I started working retail at a camping store while I was looking for a full-time job. So I finally got hired as a scientist, but it was like a very entry-level administrator position, but it was like at an environmental consulting firm, so I gotta do science and I gotta go out in the field a bit. So that was really all I was looking for. But then the problem became that I didn't have a long-term visa and I was gonna get kicked out by the end of the one year period when my old visa expired so that became a huge issue and so what I we ended up doing was my new employer was able to sponsor me for something called a TN visa so that's a visa based on NAFTA and it's available for Americans and Canadians who are professionals with bachelor's degrees and a certain number of limited categories with limited job titles and they want to work in each other's countries so I was able to get a TN visa which was actually tied to my employer. So my employer sponsored me with a job offer for that TN visa at, under the category of technical writer, I think, because I was an administrator, so that was like the most fitting category, but there's also a category that's biologist, so that's probably relevant for you guys who are watching. That TN visa gave me, I think, four years work visa. It might be less than that. It might be only like two, but it gave me a few extra years 
but that visa was tied to my employer, which sucked. So I actually ended up getting laid off. And so then I had no visa. And so finally, when I got laid off, I decided to have my boyfriend sponsor me because we were common law at that point. So in Canada, if you live together for one year, you become common law spouses. And that gave me a permanent visa to stay in Canada for as long as I want to stay. So that's what I'm on now. And in a few months, I will get citizenship. That's a little bit of my visa journey. There's so many different visas you guys can have. And honestly, for the people who are commenting on my videos asking if they should move to Canada to become a wildlife biologist, you have to figure out your visa situation first because no one is going to hire you without a visa already. The only reason I got that one company to sponsor me for my visa was because I had already been working there for a year under my working holiday visa so they had that like personal connection and they wanted me to stay and they were willing to help me out but if I was just applying why would they pick someone who needs a visa sponsorship over a qualified person who's already in Canada unless it's a very very specialized role or you are extremely on top of your game, one of the best biologists in your country. But if you have a bachelor's degree, you can actually get a certain number of points. And if you get enough points, then you actually are eligible for permanent residency. So this could be an option for a lot of people. So you get points for things like speaking English, speaking French, having a job offer already, having a bachelor's degree, having an advanced degree, a skilled worker's permanent residency application might be your best bet. Now I'm going to talk about the differences of what it's like to be a scientist in the United States and to be a scientist in Canada. When I came to Canada in 2014, we had a democratic government in the US. So this isn't a case of me fleeing Canada because of Donald Trump or anything like that. At the time that I moved, there was not a ton of work in California as a wildlife biologist. There was, however, a big boom in the oil and gas industry here in Canada. So I figured I could come to Canada, get into this boom time and kind of get working in the industry as soon as I can. And another bit of my reasoning too was like in California, we had some cool wildlife, but Canada has where I live near the Rocky Mountains, we have bears, we have black bears, grizzly bears. Coming to Canada was a really unique opportunity to run into some wildlife that I had never encountered before. In California, a lot of the science was based around habitat fragmentation, how animals can move from these patchy protected areas into the other patchy protected area. But in Canada, where I live, almost everything is undeveloped with small little pockets of industry. There's so many opportunities to see some really untouched, beautiful landscapes so far from human civilization. And not to mention the cultural side of working in a lot of these like far north work camps and like some of the local indigenous communities. That's like something that I never would have gotten working in California. It would be wrong of me not to talk about the difference in being of being a scientist in the United States today and being a scientist in Canada today. So I'm gonna be really careful about what I say here. In Canada, we generally as scientists have a pretty good ability to to publish our research and not just suppress any sort of scientific findings that we have. For unfortunately, in the United States, there's some organizations where they are absolutely restricted in what, what terms they can publish to not even be able to use basic words as a federal government biologist because it's against the administration's view of how they see the environment as non-scientists that really bothers me and that's not something that I could do <laughs> honestly for those who are really inspired to take the leap and come to Canada it's not an easy journey especially with the visa stuff I think a lot of people don't realize you can't just move to Canada <laughs> You have to have a visa and you have to have a really good reason for being here. I'm really enjoying the benefits we have as Canadians, specifically our healthcare. We have universal healthcare. We have about a year maternity leave is standard for most jobs. It's really nice just to be away from my home country and to experience something a little bit new, but have the same similar culture and um, similar environment and also really quick 
flight home. I hope this gives you a little bit of a look into why I chose to move to Canada, some of the downsides that I faced, some of the upsides. So if you guys have any questions about my experience, I'm gonna say now I can't really advise you on visa things. You're gonna have to see an immigration lawyer or do some research online and I don't wanna give you guys any of the wrong information. Leave a comment down below and um, let me know what you thought of this video and thank you for watching. Thank you.